Hi, this is John from Proper Coils. Welcome to episode two of Coil School. Today, we're going to learn how to make some fused Clapton coils. So tools we're going to need to make the fused claptons are a set of pliers, a pair of scissors, a screwdriver, a coiling rod, a ceramic tweezers, a set of wire cutters, a coil cutting tool, a set of nylon pliers, some fishing swivels, some cotton to wick your coils, something to mount your fishing swivels on. So this can be a purpose-made device like this, or it can be a block of wood with a that is clamped to your table. Some sort of drill, whether it's cordless or corded. And lastly, we need our wire. So today we're going to be using some 24 gauge nichrome. So two pieces of 24 gauge nichrome, and it's going to be wrapped in 34 gauge nichrome. So five wraps at three millimeter for our fuse claptons is going to ohm out at 0 0.1 joule coil. So the first thing we need to do to make our fuse claptons is to straighten our coil wire. So our coil wire is 24 gauge nichrome, and again we're wrapping it with 34 gauge nichrome. The gap, usually the gap between the coil wire and the wrap wire is usually around between 8 and 10. So if the gauge is 24 gauge for your core, the outer wrap is going to be around 34 or 36 usually. Uh, so usually a gap of 8 or 10. So our gap is 10, which is fine. So first thing we need to do is prep our cores. So for a fuse clapton, you're going to have more than one core wire. On episode one, we done a tutorial on a clapton, which was one core wire with a wrap around it. This is going to be a fuse clapton, which is two cores with a wrap around it. So we're going to straighten the core wire, the two core wires. So for for a to make one coil, one fuse clapton, you need a four inch length. So obviously double that for two coils is going to be eight inches. And then we're going to give us another, give ourselves two inches either side of the good wire to fix to our drill and to fix to our swivel. So that's, in total, we're going to stretch out two pieces of 24 gauge nichrome and we're going to straighten them to 12 inches. So we're going to grab, there's two ways of doing this. One way you can actually make an L shape and fit it into your drill and then hold one end with your pliers and then run the drill for two seconds. That's going to straighten it. But the easier way for me is to get your, roughly your 12, 12 inch piece, grab it with your pliers and give it a pull. And that is going to straighten your wire. So I'm going to cut off, I'm going to cut off the, the jaggedy end and we're going to cut that to roughly to the foot. And then we're going to do the same again. So roughly a foot, grab your pliers and give it a pull. And that will straighten your wire. So we cut it again at a foot. So now we have our two straight core wire pieces. So the next thing we want to do is put an L shape an L shape on the end of both both the both the core wires. So you can see there an L shape. So that's going to slot into the slots on our drill. So take your two L shapes that you've made with your core wires and slot them into two of the three slots in your the chuck of your drill. And try and make sure that the the two core wires are centered as much as possible in the chuck and tighten it down. So it should look something like that. So the next thing is to get the, at the other end of the two cores secured to your swivels. So grab your two cores, the end of your cores, and push them through the last fishing swivel you have and make a U-shape. 
like so. And then you can grab your pliers. Grab your pliers and give it a twist. A couple of twists is enough. And that is going to secure the opposite end. And then you can pull your drill straight. And now we're ready to secure the the wrap well. Our 34 gauge nichrome is going to be attached to one of the L shapes that is peeking out of the chuck. So we're going to wrap it round three or four times. And that is going to secure it to the chuck. We're going to slot it down one of the slots and then we're going to rotate the drill a couple of times. And that was going to give us a starting point to work from. So we have our we have our two core wires set up. We have the prep work done. We have them straightened. We have them fixed to the swivels and fixed to the drill. We have the outer wrap wire attached to the L shape here. And we have the first couple of wraps done. So the next thing is to concentrate on getting, getting a good start. So for me, I'm usually about six inches from the core wires to... Where I'm holding the 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 wire spool, and it's about a medium tension. You're not yanking on it, and you're not having it too loose because you want um you want a nice tight wrap. Um, you're also going to be trying your best to stay at ninety degrees. If you if you lead too much, you're going to have gaps, and if you do the opposite and don't and don't hit your ninety degrees, it's going to it's going to back up. So you want you want you don't have to be exactly ninety degrees, but roughly ninety degrees. A medium, a medium, um, a medium grip on your uh, wire spool, and start off slow. Start off slow. Make sure you have a bit of tension pulled from your drill. You can clamp your drill to the table, but um, it's not. It's not necessary. It's not really necessary. Uh, so you're going to start off slow, and then. When you start seeing it form properly, with no gaps, and you have your tension and angle correct, you can speed it up, and then let it rip then. Once you get to the, the end of the run, I always like to over like, uh, back it up on itself a couple of times for a few rotations. That sort of tidies it off and it tightens all the wraps you're after putting down on the core wires. So the next thing is just to snip off your, your wrap wire. Now, nine times out of ten, you're going to have some sort of twists in your core wires. So, the way I get that out of it, you grab your nylon pliers, and wherever you see a twist start, you can put your drill in reverse, and you can... You run the drill until that bit straightens, then find the next twist... And do the same. And that will 
once you've got most of the t- the twist out, it's not going to make much difference when you're wrapping your coil. Um, but uh, I always like to give it a couple of a couple of goes getting rid of some of the twists because if there is too many twists, it can be very difficult to get a a nice neat a nice neat wrap on your coil. There we go. Now it's just a case of wrapping the coils. Right, so we've cut our two fuse clapton lengths to four inches. So time to wrap our coils. So this is going to be a three mil coiling rod. And we're going to hand wrap these. So what I do is I'll put it at a slight angle. Hold it with my index finger and my thumb. And I'm going to bend a U-shape. That's going to get us started. And then I'm going to get my first wrap as tight as I can. As tight as I can to the lead leg. And then every wrap then try and keep try and keep the wrap as tight to the wrap next to it. So that's three, four, five. That was five. So the way I wrap my coils is I'll leave a 90 degree angle. So that's 90 degrees roughly. And then I'll, I'll bend. I'll bend the outside leg so that it sits parallel with the other one. And that is, that's how I wrap the coils. We'll do the same with the other one. U-shape. Your first wrap is the most important. Get it tight to the lead leg. And second wrap. Third wrap. Fourth wrap. And fifth. Get my 90 degrees, 90 degree there, and bend it level with the other leg. And that is, that is our set of fused captains, ready to be fitted into a device. So the RDA we're going to be using today is the Screamer RDA from Fallout Vape. This is a this is a new new purchase for myself. I um I haven't used this yet, so we're going to build this. It's power. It's a was a good deal on these at the minute. Um, on one of the UK websites. So we're going to be sticking um sticking the fuse clappings in the Screamer RDA. So let's get building.
So that is the fused claptons fitted in the screamer audio, and they're fire nicely, and they come out at point point one. So let's bring it back up top. So back up top with the screamer audio with the fused claptons we built, and they came out perfectly at point one. So for me, a point one set of fuse claptons or even aliens are perfect for a single battery mech. So this is a 21700 mech from Fallout Vip. And it's performing very well with the fuse claptons in. So that was episode two of Coil School. I'm going to be hopefully doing uh, some sort of coil tutorial uh, on a monthly basis, maybe one video a month. So in the comment section, let me know what you'd like to see next uh, in episode three of Coil School. So eventually, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing like staggered fuse captains. I'm going to be doing aliens, uh, fralians, frame staples, um, and if you have any other suggestions, I'll I'll do a video on those as well. Um, but it's probably going to be on a monthly basis in between all my all the product reviews. So. Uh, yeah, so that was the episode three of Coil School. If you've enjoyed the tutorial, or you enjoyed my, or you enjoy my reviews or tutorials in general, make sure you hit the subscribe and the notification bell. If you're looking for any handmade coils, make sure you head over to propercoils.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. <laughs>